Hey everyone, how are you this evening? Hope everyone is doing well. I hope you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? I see there's a bunch of folks out here already. I see Renee and Iris, Miss Sanson, Trisha. Hey Carol. Hey Michelle, how are you? Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, awesome. Okay, thanks, Miss Samson. Okay, guys. Oh, and Mello said hello. <laughs> hey, for this happy hour, I was thinking about shirts. You know, because, you know, Christmas is coming up, guys. So I know that a lot of people are into, like, you know, making and selling shirts and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking about all the different methods that I do to use shirts, you know, to, to sell shirts. And I wanted to talk to you guys about each of the methods that I use and what I like about it and what I don't like about each one. So I'm going to focus on three. I'm, I'm going to focus on um, heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to focus on sublimation. And then I'm also going to talk a lot about um, embroidery. I'm actually going to talk a lot about all three because I want to I want to talk to you guys about the you know, what I like and what I don't like, okay? So, um, you know, when I first started crafting, I actually got into the Cricut machine. And when I first started, I started with the Cricut Explorer 2. And I remember I got the machine for free because I saved a whole bunch of uh, gift cards. And I actually bought it from Bed Bath & Beyond. Back in the day, they had sold it. And I bought it on their website, and I got the 20% off, plus I got to use these Bed Bath & Beyond gift cards that I got off of my Discover for my cash back. So um, that's how I ended up starting, right? So I started playing around with the Cricut machine. And one of the things that I started playing around with was the vinyl. Now, the vinyl that I first started with was not the heat transfer vinyl. It was like the permanent and temporary adhesive vinyl. And I was putting it on glass and I was putting it on, um, you know, wooden, um, wooden signs and all that kind of stuff. But then later on, I did end up discuss, uh, discovering heat transfer vinyl, okay? Now, when I first started, I really didn't have much of anything, okay? All I had was the Cricut machine, and then when I discovered the heat vinyl transfer, I started using like a regular iron. Now, one of the things that I noticed, when you use a regular iron, sometimes you can't really tell the exact temperature that you have on your iron, right? And sometimes irons do not actually iron evenly, okay? If you look at the bottom of the iron, the iron has like a whole bunch of different holes for, you know, the steam to go through and all that kind of stuff. So then I heard about um, their uh, Easy Press, right? The Cricut Easy Press. So I invested in one of those, right? Uh, one of the things that I noticed about the Easy Press is, when I was watching uh, tutorials, they were like, oh, you know, you have the certain degrees that you have to put your easy press on in a certain uh, time, right? You have like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, stuff like that. But one thing they don't tell you about is pressure, okay? And the pressure is extremely important because if you don't put enough pressure when you are putting the heat transfer vinyl on a shirt, it will stick, but it may not have a long lifeline, okay? Which means that you may end up having a shirt that the letters and stuff are going to peel off. Um, that happened to me um, several times when I first started to sell shirts. I started uh, making shirts for um, car clubs. And, you know, because, you know, um, the Tesla, you know, at back then there weren't a lot of Tesla drivers, right? So we used to do like, you know, we used to do meetups and we used to like have like, you know, all the cars would get together and stuff like that. And we would try to educate people about owning an electric car. So I would make the shirt and they were great for that event because everything was like freshly made. But what would happen was some of them was reaching out and going, man, my letters fell off. And I would be like, what? You know, and I ended up finding out that it was because I was not putting enough pressure on the Cricut heat press. Right. 
Now, for those of you that know the heat, the Cricut heat press is like a regular iron, but it's it's square, and they have different types. They have the little, the little mini one that looks like a little mini iron, and then they have, I believe it's a six by six, a nine by nine, and a twelve by thirteen, something like that. I have the the nine by nine one. Um, and I have to be honest, um, since I got my professional heat press, I I don't use it much, um, you know. So, but let me let me tell you more about the heat vinyl transfer. Another issue that I came about also, there are different types of heat vinyl transfer out there. Okay, you got foil, you got the one with the glitter, um, and there's different brands also. I used to use the Cricut brand, but then um, I saw that that those were not very long lasting. And at the same time, one of the things that I saw was Michael's really had a hard time putting those things on sale. Okay. You couldn't use them with your coupon or anything like that. And for those of you guys that have been watching me for a long time, you guys know that I am pretty, frith, you know, frithy. I'm, I'm cheap. Okay. I like keeping my money in my pocket. So anyway, um, when I saw that I couldn't use coupons and stuff for cricket items and everything, Right next to the Cricut, they have something called Caesar, right? So the Caesar is really very good. I mean, I, you know, I went on a lot of Facebook groups and I was, you know, you, you it's really helpful also if you if you go through these Facebook groups on 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 Facebook, heat vinyl transfer and all that kind of stuff. Just look them up, join them, and ask questions. And that's what I was doing. And a lot of people were coming out and they were saying, oh, I use Caesar. And I was like, oh, so I, you know, with Michael's, you can use your coupon to get Caesar. So I went and I started buying them and um, I ended up liking that vinyl a lot better. So, you know, to be honest, um, it is the cheap way to go. OK, I mean, I, you know, I always, you know, when, when you're first starting out, and you're looking at shirts and stuff, vinyl is a, a really cheap way to go, okay? And it's not hard to do, especially if you have a cutting machine. Um, it doesn't have to be a Cricut. I know people with silhouettes, and, and I think there's a brother scan and cut. You can, you know, there's a lot of different cutter machines out there. You know, you could just get that vinyl and you just cut it up and, you know, and apply it. Now, the thing is, I'm sure that um, probably in the beginning, I was having problems with the heat vinyl transfer because I probably wasn't applying it the way I was supposed to do. I probably wasn't either using the right temperature or using the right setting, you know, the, the seconds, the time. And also I wasn't putting the right pressure. Now, since I've gotten my heat press though, I will say that is not a problem I no longer have. But I wanted to show you guys some shirts from the old days, okay? Um, this was glitter. This was this was glitter, okay, heat vinyl transfer. And this is a real old shirt, and this is from one of my meetup groups, okay? Um, you know, I actually have, um, you know, I actually have Boricua on, uh, written on my Tesla, on, on the front of my Tesla. So if you guys ever see me in Northern Virginia, if you see a white Model X with Boricua on the side, that's me. <laughs> so anyway... Um, but these, this was the shirt that I wore. As you can see, it's still glued on. It's still glued on, no issues and stuff like that. I mean, it's just that the shirt kind of looks kind of like uh, beat up, you know, because we're talking about this is, it's been a couple of years and stuff like that. But um, I did this for one of my, my uh, meetup groups. This is Caesar Glitter, okay? And I did apply this with the uh, Cricut uh, Press. OK, and um, it held up pretty, pretty good. So but I have to be honest, if I remember correctly, when I did this shirt, I really put a lot of pressure down on it. OK, and, you know, you can always um, re iron this, too. But the thing is, when you're selling these to customers, you don't want to tell them that, you know, you <laughs> you don't want them to say, oh, if, it, if the letters fall off, just re iron it. Because this is the thing. If you tell them that, that they're going to be like, well, your shirts are no quality, right? Then, you know, because you don't, you, you don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, the thing is, if you're going to put shirts out there, make sure that you're putting out shirts that, that are good quality. Anything that you do, seriously, you know. But, um, you know, this was the glitter. And, and this is Caesar. This is Caesar glitter. 
As you can see, it's very, very shiny too. Um, so this came out pretty, pretty good. However, though, let me show you one that didn't come out really good. Let me see. Do I have it? Oh, yeah. Okay. This was one that I did. This is when the letters fell off. Okay. All right. So as you can see, all right, I'm missing my L and I'm missing my A. Okay. So this one did not make it. Okay. This was the Cricut vinyl. And um, also, let, I'm going to put this really close to the camera so you guys can see also. I want you guys to notice, uh, you know, and I, I don't know, can you, can you tell? Let me try to put it real here. Um, as you can see, there you go. I think you can see it. See how it kind of cracks? Okay. And as you can see, some of it is peeling off. And it's kind of cracky. It's not very attractive looking. It really is. So this is this is a shirt I wear around the house. So um, this was the um, Cricut uh, vinyl that I used, and this is I think you know one of the first ones. Um, it looked great for the uh, the meetup group, but uh, it just did not make it. Uh, you know. And, and I, I honestly, I really don't know how long these things are supposed to last. I'm going to be honest with you, you know, but the thing is, it's kind of like, you know, disappointing in a way. So I'm just like, uh, but the, and when I use this, I mean, even though the shirt looks a little jacked up because it was a lot, you know, wider, you know, it was nicer and stuff like that. But, um, this is really still intact and it looks really good and stuff like that. All it needs is a really good iron and, and it's good to go. So one of the things that I wanted to tell you guys is when it comes to heat vinyl transfer, it is it is um, more economical if you want to start selling shirts. It is economical. But the thing is, make sure that you really know the type of brand of the vinyl that you're buying and make sure you test out a couple of shirts also. Um, there are a lot of websites out there. I usually buy my heat vinyl transfer by bulk, and I usually get it. it used, they used to call, they used to be named 659 Vinyl, and I believe they renamed their uh, their business, and I think their business is now 143 Vinyl, something like that, 143vinyl.com. And I usually buy it from there because I usually get them by the bulk, by the roll. The only time you'll see me getting it from Michael's is because I ran out and um, I have an order that I have to fill and I just don't have the time to wait the three or four days for, um, you know, the, the place to like mail me the, the big roll. I usually get um, the real big one so that way it lasts a long time. So um, heat final time transfer, my feel on it, um, it's something that I still do. I still use shirts with heat transfer vinyl. Um, but my thing is, if you can afford a heat press, I mean, I would say that's really the way to go to apply it. Because I think you would get the best results with a heat press. All the shirts that I've made with a heat press, no issues, okay? Um, however, though, when I use the Cricut press and all that kind of stuff, I did kind of have, it's like a hit and miss. You know, you have to put a lot of pressure on it. And, you know, you have to do the temperature, you know, you got to make sure it's, it's right. With the heat press, one of the things that I love is you set the temperature and you set the timer. And when you slam that thing shut, it actually does the pressure for you, okay? It actually really squishes the, the, the vinyl to your shirt. And I use a Teflon sheet also. So, you know, it's like, I feel like you really get much better results because every time you, you should, you know, you close up that heat press, you always have the right pressure, you have the right temperature and you have the right um, timing. And one of the things that I like is when you look at those, those uh, heat presses, it's even temperature. It's not like when you use an iron, when you have an iron, you have little holes and stuff. And then you could have like, you know, the, the temperature really is not that even. So, and it's all done in one scoop. It's like you put the shirt in there you close it up and you just wait for the timer and then you open it up. Mine, mine opens automatically at the end of the timer. You know, they have so many different types of heat presses. You don't have to go out and, and get a real expensive, expensive one either. I mean, heat presses can go up in the thousands. Mine was, I, I think I spent like 329, something like that, you know, but they have some, 
Um, I didn't get my heat press off of Amazon for the simple reason as that when I looked at Amazon and I was looking at all these different heat presses, I got all these different reviews. So it was really hard for me to decide which heat press that I saw on Amazon was really going to be okay. And the thing is, too, is when you're talking about heat press, you're talking about a big piece of equipment, you know, and the last thing I wanted to do was to get something here that came in this huge big box. They're heavy, okay? They're not light either. They're very, very heavy. So I did not want to bother with the return. So what I did was I got mine from Pro World Inc. Um, they had like five-star reviews. And um, my sister actually had a heat press because she had she ran a t-shirt business from her house like years ago. That was like before cricket and all that stuff. But she had a heat press and she got it from that company and she really liked it. And she I think she still has it to this day. So because of that, I actually that's why I went down there. And I said, okay, so I'm going to get it from Pro World. And I got to be honest, I, I haven't had any issues with mine um, since the day that it got here. Um, I've had it now mm, three years, three years, um, and no issues, um, always worked. But I'm sure that, you know, uh, there are other heat presses out there that, that work just as good. Um, my whole thing was I just didn't want to take that chance. You know, but um, I'm sure there are others. Just ask around, you know, ask people, you know, that, you know, go to Facebook groups and ask them what heat press do you use? Um, you know, because they have them in different prices. So, you know, but that is one thing that I do recommend. If you're going to do heat vinyl transfer on a shirt, try to get a heat press if you can get your hands on one. Um, for the simple fact that you would get much better long lasting results on your shirt. All right. You're not going to end up, you know, walking around like this. OK, <laughs> that's the thing. OK, because my letters were like all like jacked up. So I was like, OK, that's you know, that didn't work. So now the other thing that I do like about um, heat transfer vinyl is they have a lot a big variety of it. Um, I remember the crafty Puerto Rican. She went to the expo and she did a video when she went to go. Um, to the expo and she was looking at a particular vinyl and it was like, um, oh, I think it was like a block or puff. I think they called it puff, puff vinyl, that I, if I remember correctly. And I know she's on, so uh, let me know if I'm wrong, okay? But I believe she, she was looking at puff vinyl and um, it looked really good. I mean, they were showing some samples and stuff and it, it looked kind of puffy, you know? And it made me think about puff embroidery, okay? So, um, and it looked really good. Now, I have not tried the puff vinyl. Um, I've only done um, Easy Weave. I've done the glitter. Um, I have tried the stretch, and I had issues with the stretch, okay? Um, I had to refund and remake a lot of shirts with the stretch because, and that, and I'm going to be honest, it's because of the stretch vinyl that I actually got the heat press. Because um, I went on a Facebook group and um, I think it's uh, hot off the press or heat off the press, something like that. Um, and they there was like a whole bunch of sections of people that were using that particular vinyl and they were having issues with their customers shirts as well. But I will tell you, um, I will give Caesar a lot of credit. They actually responded to all everyone's um, concerns. And they actually um, gave a lot of hints on how to properly press those stretch vinyl. One of the things that they said was, make sure that the heat press is actually, you know, um, plugged in directly from the wall. The reason is because if you have an extension cord, the electricity is not gonna go through. Um, and it, it may not evenly heat up the heat press. So I was kind of like, oh, now I'm going to be honest with you. I was one of those that was using an extension cord. OK, so when I saw that. I was like, oh, now I'm going to be honest. That's the only thing I had changed. All right. Then when I went and I reused the vinyl, it worked perfect. So I was kind of like, at first I was like, really, you know, like the extension, you know, caused that. 
But I'm gonna be honest, it did it my heat press did work a lot better when it was um directly plugged in to the outlet instead of using an extension cord. Okay. And the other thing too was they talked about, you know, the amount of of pressure also. Um, when you use the um, I was doing light pressure. They they were doing uh, medium, so I did have to adjust the pressure. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Just literally remember that. So it was the pressure, and my heat press was not um, directly, uh, you know, in the outlet in the the um, wall. So that, but then after that, I had no problems with it. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not want to use that vinyl anymore after I had that experience because we're talking about. I think I had like ten orders that I had to redo. Um, and what happened was it was one customer that reached out to me and told me about the issue. And I was not going to wait for customer number two, three, four, five, and six to come out and tell me. So I looked at all my Etsy orders and then the ones that I knew I used that vinyl for, what I did was I redid the shirt. Okay. And I gave them a note and I just resent it. Now, you know, I know that was kind of like money lost out of my pocket by doing that. But the thing is, my whole thing was um, I looked at it as it's the right thing to do. You know, I mean, I know they got a shirt that I did not press correctly. And, you know, they gave me twenty five dollars and I just did not feel right of not sending them a replacement shirt. So, you know, it, it was a loss. Um at that time period. But at the end of the day, I think I did the right thing. I was just like, you know, I just don't like that. I don't, I don't, mm -mm. you know, so I was just like, okay. So, and I'm gonna be honest, some of those customers that I reset the shirt to, they actually reached out to me to say, thank you. You know, which I thought was like pretty cool. You know, they didn't have to do that. You know, if anything, they could have came out and said, what the hell is this? She sent me a second shirt, you know, <laughs> But I actually ended up getting good reactions from the customers by reaching out to them ahead of time and say, hey, I don't think I, I pressed your first shirt correctly. Please accept the second one um, just in case the other shirt doesn't work out. You, you have two. So I just looked at it as it's just um, better to, to do the right thing. I, that, that was just me. So, um, OK, the other thing I want to talk to you guys about. Let's let's go over down to sublimation. OK, um, sublimation. I like I really, really do like. However, there's some caveats to sublimation. OK, just like I said, heat vinyl transfer, very economical sublimation, very expensive. The ink is pricey. OK, they have a lot of different sublimation uh, printers out there. I got a Sawgrass 500, um, you know, and the ink for that machine is very, very pricey. I know that there are other alternatives out there. I've heard about people getting printers and turning them into sublimation printers and using all types of different inks out there. Um, I have not used the other types of inks because with Sawgrass, you're really kind of like stuck. You're, it's like you, you got the machine, you got the ink. You know, it's not like a, a regular printer where you can just take out a cartridge and, and, and change out the ink. Or if you can, I, I don't know about it. Okay. So I've always stuck with the ink that I'm supposed to get with use with the, the sawgrass. Now I have owned the sawgrass for about a year now. And mostly what I have used that printer for is for cups, um, tumblers, you know, um, like this. Um, I did this one with the sublimation and I have to admit, I love it. What I love about it is I can actually put it in the dishwasher. Okay. The ink doesn't come off. Um, you know, all the cups, golden tumblers, golden. And the other thing that I like is the shirts. Okay. Now this shirt kind of looks a little raggy. Okay. You know, these are old shirts. Okay. These are one that I did. I hosted a, a bingo for my job. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was the bingo caller. So this is um, a shirt in sublimation. Okay. Um, I work for the air force. So um, the shirt is kind of old. All right. 
but um you know it's okay um the ink came out really nice now one of the things that i really do like about the sublimation on a shirt the ink is going on the fibers of the shirt okay it's not the same like the vinyl the vinyl is sitting on top of the material. With sublimation, it's kind of like the ink and the shirt gets married, like for life, all right? They're actually in the fiber. You don't feel it when you touch it. And um, it looks really good. Now, I noticed that with this shirt, I feel like it faded a little bit to the time the colors have faded a little bit. Now, this shirt that I use, this is the Cricut one the cricket sublimation shirt i'm not a fan of these shirts um i was using them because i was able to you know get them from michael's and um you know it was i would get them when they were on sale and stuff even though cricket really rarely goes on sale but i would just get one or two shirts and it was just to try it out now one of the things that i do do is I go to jiffyshirts.com and I buy the hoodies that are like 100% polyester. And I had made a couple of hoodies for, for friends of mine for their birthdays and stuff. Um, I have one friend that unfortunately, you know, she's fighting cancer. So what I did um, for her first day of getting chemo, I made a uh, hoodie and, you know, with positive affirmations all over and stuff, you know, so that, you know, she could stay strong, you know, and, um, you know, it came out beautiful. It really, really did. I love the colors of sublimation, very bright and stuff, but expensive. The ink is expensive and this is something else. Okay. Unforgiving. That is one thing that I say about sublimation. Okay. <laughs> no matter what you do, I have tossed out so many things because I messed up, okay? I, I mean, these, I bought, I actually bought, um, this is, I, I bought a whole bunch. These are like skinny tumblers, okay? And I bought a bunch of these. And I even went out and I bought a toaster oven that was extra large just for this, okay? Because you don't want to put this kind of stuff and bake it in your regular oven, okay? A lot of chemicals and all that kind of stuff. Don't want to mix, you know, the oven that you eat with with the oven that you craft with, okay? So um, I had to toss out a lot of these as I learned the process. You have to really get the temperature and the pressure right when you're doing tumblers and stuff, especially if you're doing them in in an oven because it's it's hard i did a a, a beer mug for my neighbor um i had to toss away two beer mugs before i actually got it right then i went and i made another one for his friend his friend wanted me to make a whole bunch of them and i had to turn that down because i was like mm -mm. As hard as that was, I, I just couldn't do it because each of those individual blank beer mugs were about like 10 to $11. And I have to tell you, it bothered me. It really did when I messed up on a beer mug and I had to throw it in the garbage can. I mean, because all I saw, I mean, to you, you may have saw a beer mug, but you know what I saw? I saw like a $10, $10 bill going into the garbage can. And I just like, I, I, could, I couldn't swallow it. I just couldn't swallow it. So I was just like, okay, the beer mug sublimation, it ain't my thing, okay? Because I'll have a heart attack by the end of the night if I have to throw away like three of them, okay? Because I'll be like, that's $30. <laughs> I can't do it, you know? So, um, you know, it's just sublimation to me, unforgiving. So it's like, you really got to, you, you, you know, you're going to have to do, uh, a research and development budget for that, okay? You're gonna have to get blanks and just know that these are the blanks for testing, okay? And you're gonna have to live with that. I couldn't live with it because I was just like, I, I was, 
I was having heart attacks, okay? And I was getting upset and I was getting mad. So I was like, okay, the beer mugs is not my thing. So I just kind of like told my neighbor and his friend, you guys are just lucky that you got those, <laughs> those beer mugs because I don't think I'm going to be ever doing those again, okay? Um, coffee mugs. Very easy to do, but at the same time, though, the coffee mugs are very easy for me to do because I actually have a mug press that I actually bought from Pro World also. So, you know, that's not a problem because the um, the mug press works exactly like a heat press, okay? You wrap it um, around the coffee mug, you put it into the oval thing, you press the thing, it does the pressure for you and it does the timing for you. So it works great. So it's very easy for you not, you know, not to make a mistake. So, you know, that works great. I got the shirts down pack. I know the temperature, I know the pressure, and I know the timing, and I have my heat press. So the only thing is the shirts. I I have to order my shirts online. I usually get them from Jiffy shirts. I am particular about the shirts that I like to use. Um, and the thing is, too, is in order for the ink to be very, very bright, you have to use 100% polyester. Now, there are some products out there that say that you can spray on the shirt and it'll help with the sublimation if you have a cotton shirt or something like that. I personally have not tried any of those items, you know, those, those gadgets. Um, I don't know how, how, well, how well they work and how long lasting they are. Um, I do know also that you can take a shirt that's not 100% polyester, um, maybe that's 70, 75% or 70% polyester, something like that, and you can't sublimate on that. But do know that the higher um, the cotton count or the less the polyester, the lesser the percentage of the polyester, the less brighter your colors may be on that shirt. That's just something to think about. Now, however, though, if like, let's say you have a design where you don't, you're not using the real super bright colors, you may be wanting to go for that look. And if you want to go for that look, then, hey, you're golden. Then you don't need 100% polyester. Okay. Now, the one thing too is the polyester shirts. I will, I'm going to, you know, this is something I have the hoodies. Um. I sometimes don't like the way they feel. So I have been playing around with the different brands of the 100% polyester hoodies. Sometimes I just feel like, you know, they're nice and soft, but I just feel like they're like delicate. Like I'm going to, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm describing it right. Like I feel like they're going to, uh, I don't know, like peel off or something. I don't know. It's just, it just doesn't feel right, you know? <laughs> It just, it doesn't give me that, that, that good feeling thing, you know? I mean, it's okay. The sweatshirt that I bought was okay. Um, cause I did get a sweatshirt and I did do a sublimation. Um, and my girlfriend, you know, um, Mary loves her shirt. And then I, I did one for my girlfriend, Adrian, and she, you know, for her birthday, you know, and she, she likes it. Now, another thing that I do notice and I want to just let you guys know up front, this is the, the Cricut shirt, okay? One of the things that I do notice is I see a lot of, um, after you wash it, like a lot of balls. It's like little cotton balls, kind of like when you look at the, the shirt and stuff, you look at it, and then it's, it's like little fuzz balls. That's it. That's the word. It's, it's like it gets little fuzz balls and stuff. And I do know that when you are um, using these type of shirts, and um, doing the uh, sublimation, one of the things they tell you to do is to use the lint brush. So you're supposed to, you know, put the, the shirt on the heat press. And then before you put the design or anything like that, you use the lint brush because you want to make sure that you got a nice, smooth, clean area for you to put your item on there. Um, but, you know, and, I, and I've done that. But I just noticed that after a couple of washes, I do get the fuzz balls. And maybe that's why I'm just not too much of a big fan of the polyester. It's because of the fuzz ball. Now, I have not gotten those fuzz balls on the, on the sweatshirts that I bought off of Jiffy shirts. Um, you know, but the Cricut shirts, I've always gotten them every time I take them out of the wash. 
Um, it's just one wash, and the, and there you go. It's, it's fuzz balls everywhere. I mean, they're not, they, you know, they're not bad, bad, but I know they're there and I see them. So that to me is kind of like I don't like that. You know, it's just my thing. Okay, so you know, sublimation, I I I like, I do like it. Um, uh, it just like I said, the method I would use depend on a lot on the design. If I have something that is very, very simple, that doesn't really require a lot of colors and stuff like that, I would do heat vinyl transfer. And, you know, heat vinyl transfer has so many options. They really do. I mean, they have foil. They have the, the puff. They, you know, they got so many. Um, they have the one with the reflective colors and everything. You can get almost any color. You get the glitter and everything like that. So, you know, the heat vinyl transfer is, is really great. Now, however, though, if you have a design that's very, very detailed, okay, similar like my job's logo, okay, my job's logo, very, very, very detailed. This would be very difficult to do on heat vinyl transfer, okay, because there are a lot of details in it. Like even in the black, the black area is not really fully black, okay? There's a lot of ones and zeros in there. You know, by, you know that's the binary uh, binary for, for IT. So you have all your, your ones and zeros in there and stuff. To do this in heat vinyl transfer, it would be kind of like impossible. You would have to modify the logo. In other words, you would not have the ones and the zeros in there. You would just probably have a solid black. And that just kind of like wouldn't work, especially, um, you know, uh, with uh, certain organizations, you know, they, they're very particular about their logo. It has to be very, very precise. So for something like this, sublimation would be the way to go because there you would capture everything, all, all the details of that image. So if you have something that has a lot of color, a lot of detail and stuff like that, sublimation is really best to use but if you have something that has less detail and not a lot of colors and stuff kind of very simple designs then i would be like hey heat vinyl transfer i mean why not you know and then one of the things also that i do like let me mention about heat vinyl transfer is i have never had a problem really putting it on any type of shirt okay um now i haven't put it on like a silk or satin shirt okay but I've done it on polyester shirts. I've done it on mixed bland shirts, okay, that are polyester and, and cotton and stuff like that. And I have been able to, you know, just put the, the, the vinyl on there and never had an issue. So that is one thing that I really do like about the heat vinyl transfer is that they're not very picky about the type of shirt that you choose to put the, um, the, the uh, heat vinyl transfer on. As for if you go to uh, sublimation, this is picky. This is very, very, very picky. Okay. Because like I said, you know, the lower the count of the polyester in the shirt, the less brighter your colors may be. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, something to think about, you know. Um, okay. Now let's talk about embroidery. Okay. Um, a lot of people use embroidery for shirts. You know, um, I remember before even me getting into embroidery, I remember um, whenever I saw something in embroidery, a lot of things were logos, right? Like um, little people would have, uh, what do you call those shirts with the collars on them? Uh, polo shirts, there you go. Polo shirts with the little logo, company logos on there. I would see it in hats, baseball hats. I remember seeing them on book bags, um, company bags, stuff like that, um, patches and stuff. But then, you know, people started to actually, you know, play around more with embroidery. And, you know, it's no longer something for little, little things. OK, you know, um, you know, because a lot of times when when I saw embroidery in the past, they were they were done for small things. Right. It was like really the largest would be like a patch. Right. Or maybe a patch for a motorcycle jacket or something like that. Right. Now people have actually expanded. Now people are doing all types of things, you know, like they're making them bigger. OK. Um, I like the embroidery on the shirts, but this is the only thing that really stands out in my mind about a con of doing embroidery on a shirt. 
time. That is the con, okay, to me, the time, all right? Um, see, they came up real cute, cute little, cute little designs you can do. Um, the thing is, when you're doing sublimation and when you're doing heat vinyl transfer, it's not that those things don't take time. They do. Okay. But once you have, you know, it's like you create the design, you know, you, you put it through your Cricut machine or your cutter and stuff like that. And then you just peel off the the vinyl and stuff, and then you're good to go. You iron it on. With the sublimation, of course, you have to go in your software, right? And you design your image and stuff like that. You, and then it's printed out, press it on, okay? With embroidery, okay, you do have that design time, okay, where you have to go in, you have to design your file and, and stuff. Um, but then you have to put it in the machine. And then you have to do your colors, right? You have to re you have to thread your machine for embroidery. And then after that, then the machine is not, it's it's not um it's not quick. It's not a it's not a quick thing like running it on a heat press. See, with, with heat vinyl transfer and with the sublimation, you know, you have a particular temperature and you have time, you stick it in the machine, you just press it, you're done. But when you are embroidering a shirt, it's different, okay? It's different because you have to design it. And then after you design it, then you have to take it to your machine. Then you have to set up your machine for that particular shirt. And then you also have to watch it, okay? I mean, embroidery, that is one thing that a lot of people have the misperception of that you can press a button and walk away. No, you cannot because you have thread breaks. And sometimes you have issues that can arise. And then sometimes depending on the machine that you have, if you have a single needle, then you're definitely stuck there in that chair because you have to change out all the colors. Okay. And if you have a six or a 10 or a 16 needle, you know, what if the design is very, very detailed and it has 18 color changes? Okay. I mean, you know, it doesn't, and to me, this is how I look at, even if you have the machine that has all the colors on there, you still got to babysit it because if you get a snag, you got to fix it, you know, and sometimes you got to, you know, it's, it's just more, it's more time consuming. And then depending on the, uh, the design, you could be sitting there for a long time. Okay. Cause I have had some designs that it could take an hour and a half to stitch out because of all of the stitches. And there's a lot of things too that you have to consider when it comes to embroidery. Not everything can be embroidered, okay? I mean, that is one thing that, you know, sometimes people kind of like, you know, especially like customers, sometimes they'll come to me and they'll they'll say, hey, I want you to do this. I want you to embroider on this. And they'll give me a shirt. And I look at it and I'm like, no, I can't do that. Well, I don't feel comfortable doing it because first of all, it's probably a material that I haven't worked on. Or when I look at the material, I can tell that, you know, especially like very, very stretchy material. Um, I don't feel want to I'm not, I don't feel comfortable embroidering on extremely stretchy material for the simple fact that I know you're going to wash it. It'll look great when I take it off the machine. I'll use, I'll use cutaway stabilizer. I'll even put two layers of cutaway stabilizer, okay? But the thing is, when I take it off the machine and then after you wear it, you put it in that washing machine, I don't know how it's going to behave. I don't, I don't know if the embroidery is going to crunch up. And stuff like that. And I just, I don't want to be bothered with the hassle because the last thing I want is for somebody to come to me and complain about, oh, this, look what happened and stuff. And then, no, I, I don't need the drama. I'm just not, I'm not into that, you know? So it's like, you know, if I, if I feel comfortable and I know it's going to last and stuff like that, I have no problem with it. I'm like, cut, give it to me. I got you. But when I look at it, if, if it's not something that I'm comfortable with, I don't touch it. Okay. And embroidery is ex expensive. If, if anything, embroidery to me is more expensive than sublimation and heat vinyl transfer, okay? First of all, the machines are not cheap. And then you have to get all the other stuff, okay? You're talking stabilizers, different threads, okay? And, you know, there's different weight threads 
all right? Because if you if they want small fonts, it's not going to be a 40 weight. It's probably going to be a 60 weight, okay? Then you have different needles, all right? You know, if it's very small font, I'm going to use a 69, uh, 65 9 needle. I'm not going to use a 75 11. You know, um, you have your, your different needles. You have your different threads. You have your different stabilizers. Then you have the machine. Then you have to hoop it. So it's a big process. It takes more time and it's more expensive, okay? Which is why I'm really sometimes like floored when people come and go, oh, that's expensive. You know, when they, they ask for you to embroider something and then, you know, you have to take all those things in consideration when you're putting in the price, okay? Then think about it, your time, all right? If you have a file that is, you know, has a lot of color changes and stuff like that, it takes an hour and a half. I'm sitting here for an hour and a half watching that shirt or that bag or whatever it is that I'm embroidering. So, you know, in, you know, I like embroidering. Trust me, I do. I love doing embroidering, okay? But there are particular products that I would prefer to embroider. Like I love doing the blankets, okay? Right now I'm still working on the designs for my mom's blanket, okay? Um, and um, there was uh, somebody, I think it was Walk by Faith or something. Thank you so much. Yes, you are, you were so right. Um, you know, I, I wanna do a family, I, I wanna do a family hurlum for my mom. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to put my mom and dad in their wedding day. And then I want to put the, her, their children and their grandkids and everything on the blanket. I think she would love it. The thing is, though, and, and I did think about it. Um, one of the things that Walk by Faith had mentioned to me, and I think it was it was that her or Carol. I, I don't I don't remember. But um, they were saying, be careful with the information you put on the blanket and totally got it. You know, uh, privacy information, very, very important. A uh, lot of, you know, I do, I am not going to put um, birth dates and all that kind of stuff in there. I think I'll just maybe do a year. Um, and I think the year should be sufficient. Um, you know, I'm going to have to talk to my sister more about that because I don't, I was thinking about doing the month and the year. Maybe I'll just do the year. Um, you know, cause I, I want to make it as personal as po as possible for my mom. But at the same time, I don't want to give her a blanket that if she loses the blanket, all our, you know, somebody uh, steals all our identities, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I gotta, you know, I, I, we gotta be smart about it. So, um, you know, so yeah, embroidery to me, you know, I, I love it. Um, I think for shirts it's great. Um, but it's just very, very expensive. Now, the thing though, too, is the quality. Quality of embroidery to me is excellent. Okay. I mean, it to me, I feel like it will outlast the um sublimation and it will definitely outlast the heat vinyl transfer. But that is just something that um, you know, that you know, you you have to, you know, tell people. You know, when you're saying, hey, you know, I want to do uh, embroidery, you know, you give them the price. They kind of look at you. They, you know, they give you that look like it's expensive, you know, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, <laughs> you should try try having an embroidery business to see how much money you be spending on equipment. You know, <laughs> it's like you then maybe you should go down the street, get some heat final transfer. But I can do that, too. You know, <laughs> but um, it's just something to think about and stuff. But um, let me see. All right. So I think I gave you guys the pros and cons of each. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Mellow stepped on them. Um, the uh, for heat vinyl transfers, the pros very economical. There's a lot of good choices out there. Um, the only thing that I feel the con is with the heat vinyl transfer is the the long longevity of the product. I don't know really how long it will last. It just and at the same time, too, you got to be kind of careful because heat vinyl transfer, it will crack. Sometimes it'll peel depending on how the the item, you know, the, the vinyl was applied to the shirt. So that's just kind of like the, the cons, in, in my opinion, on that. Sublimation, the quality, very, very good. That's the pro. The con to me when it comes to the sublimation is the cost of that ink. Whoa, can that really, that can break a, break a bank right there, okay? Um, you know, very, very um, expensive. 
And the thing is, too, is I feel that, you know, there's a learning curve. There is a, a big learning curve, at least for me, there was a big learning curve with the sublimation because I make a lot of mistakes. OK, so, you know, and you got to have the stomach for that. And, you know, I have to admit, I have my sawgrass here and um, I clean the head of the sawgrass, but I have very rarely used it other than mugs. And I need to get off that. And I need to start using that more often because, you know, my whole thing is that every time I throw a mug or anything in the garbage because I messed up, my stomach turns. Okay. Because it's like all, I don't, I don't see like, you know, it's like I, I, I tell people, I don't see a cup in the garbage. I see that money for the cup that I spent in the garbage. That's what I see. And that kind of bothers me, okay? So, so I got to get over that, okay? So somehow I'm just going to have to um, find a way to get over that that uh, that hump so that I can keep going with the sublimation because I got the machine and I know that I can do so much with that and um, I'm stopping myself from doing it. So I got I to gotta, like, I got to get off that, okay? Embroidery, great quality. Great quality, especially if you know how to do it, okay? You got to know about, you got to really be good at, at, at embroidery. Not everybody can embroider. I have to be honest with you. I got to tell you, I mean, you have to spend the time getting to know, um, you know, your, your fabrics, getting to understand the threads, getting to understand how the machines work. Um, learn, learn, you know, you don't have to be a digitizer, but learn about the process of how things get digitized. What's the best way to do it? I mean, there have been times when I had bought embroidery designs that, you know, I was just like, really, you know, I could tell they're very poor st stitch quality. Okay. And unfortunately I have, you know, I have bought some and, but what I usually do in those situations is, first of all, I'm mad because I spent money on this embroidery uh, design and it doesn't work. But I do have a digitizer that I work with and I will send, you know, I have two digitizers that, that I work with and I will send them the file and I'll say, hey, I bought this embroidery file. This is how it's stitching out. This is what my expectations are. And they will, they will go ahead and they will redesign that embroidery file so that way it stitches out well okay and i mean i think it's like twice that's happened to me already where i bought an embroidery file and i'm just like this is this is not a good quality or at least didn't meet my expectations and stuff so i just go and i get the files redone and everything so you know um you gotta you gotta really know and understand embroidery and the and the thing is too is with embroidery it's not easy a lot of people think it is it's not there is just so much to learn there's so much to to know and there's so many different options out there too like example of uh first of all embroidery machines there's so many they really really are okay so when people always ask me what machine should I get I gotta be honest I know that sometimes people get mad because I just my answer to you would always be you have to get the machine that meets your needs. Not everybody's needs are the same. OK, um, you know, some people, you know, are brand Pacific. Me, I, you know, I do like the brother brand. But, you know, when I got the 10 when I was going for the 10 little machine, the, I was looking at other brands. Now, the thing is, I, I did stick with the brother because it had a scanning capability. And that scanning capability is really what I wanted. I wanted that because I really liked that feature. So, you know, it, you got to, you, you know, just my whole thing when I, when people ask me about embroidery machines, I just tell them, look at all that's out there. Look to see what they offer. And look at your budget first, too, because let me tell you, buying an embroidery machine can be like very similar to buying a car. OK, so, um, you know, look at your budget, look at and ask yourself, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you're looking to do? Not just today, too. Like, what do you see yourself doing in the future as well? Because if you're going to be spending thousands of dollars, you want to make sure that you're getting a machine that's going to not only meet the needs that you have today, but are also going to meet those future needs for your business tomorrow. So, you know, always, you know, the machines are very, very expensive. 
and there there's huge learning curve and there's so many software okay like i've heard of so what pro i i use it brilliance but i have a mac okay now i'm gonna be honest i i i like in brilliance i do i like in brilliance but i would not mind using another embroidery software too because i mean i would love to have more than one okay but the thing is i'm kind of limited because i have a mac so when i was looking at embroidery software at the time for my mac the only one that i saw was in brilliance i didn't really see other versions out there now a lot of people were saying well janae you know you could run windows on your mac but I didn't want to go through all that stuff, even though my husband's Mac is set up like that. But he's he's an engineer. He's 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 extremely, extremely techy. I mean, he's he's all IT talk. I'm IT talk, but I have a limit. OK, after a while, it's like my brain kind of like shuts down because I'm more on the project management side and I like looking at data and all that kind of stuff. He's more of the hardcore engineer type. So, you know with his mac totally different his mac has windows and and um and i know that he could run any embroidery software on his machine now i could have him touch my mac and, and put windows in it but i don't like nobody touching my stuff so i just tell him no leave it alone because you know unfortunately we're at a at, at a point right now in our house where everything is so electronic that i don't even know how to turn on my tv okay which is probably why i watch youtube all the time because Everything is like computerized, even my front door stuff. So it's just like it's it's like <sighs> it's, you know, he computerized everything, you know. So anyway, I see I am close to nine and I know I, I gave you guys a whole lot of information and stuff like that. So I am going to go up here. Let me go up here and go. I, I have my little uh iPad right here. So I'm going to go through the iPad and see um, if you guys have questions or any comments and stuff like that that you guys want. Um, let me see. I see. Let me see. And say hi to everybody, too. Hey, Carol. How are you? Hey, Trish and Samson. I see Renee and Robin. Hey, Barb. Hey, Michelle. I love my stuff. I, oh, I love handmade stuff. Hey. Hey, Miss Max. Oops, this Angela C. <laughs> Oops, this is, oh, Angela, Angela C. Angela C, she, oh, she's going to start a YouTube channel soon and stuff. You got to make, please post your video on our Facebook group when you got your, your video stuff, okay? And stuff. Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican. Uh, let's see. I just purchased Chrome Bling HTV and I absolutely love it. It changes colors depending on the sh color of the shirt. Oh, I got to try that. I have to try that, Miss Simpson. Um, Miss Samson. I have not tried that. Uh, the only vinyl that I have really tried was the Easy Easy Weed, the uh, glitter, and some of the foil. That That's it. Um, because the thing is, I've been doing so much more of the embroidery lately. But I know that they're coming up with so many nice uh, vinyl. They even have some with patterns and stuff like that. So I think like that's like so cool and stuff. So, um, let's see. Hey, Miss Solom. Hey, Ozzy. Hi, Angela. Oh, hey, you're welcome, Miss Max. Anytime. Do you have the easy press pad? No, I don't. It makes a difference with the easy press. And you need to see the fiber come through. Yes, you do. Yes, um, I love my hand, my handmade stuff. I never did get the easy press pad. And, you know, maybe that's what kind of, like, screwed me up on, on making my shirts and stuff. Um, but the thing is, now it's like I have my Cricut easy press. I seldom take it out. I only take it out if, if you know, I have something small to, to uh, press, like umbrellas, okay? I don't know if you guys uh, ever done this. You can take heat vinyl transfer, buy a plain umbrella, and you can personalize the umbrella. So I actually use my, 
my kick, my Cricut heat press to personalize umbrellas. I did that one year where I just went and I just bought um, a whole bunch of umbrellas from the dollar store. Okay. Um, and then all I did was I put all my friends initials on the umbrella and they all loved it. And I used the Cricut heat press and my regular ironing board for that and stuff. So, um, it's an idea for you guys, you know. Hey, Harmony, how are you? Let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Smart shopper, not cheap. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, God, people say I am cheap. Because <laughs> you throw a dime on that floor, I'll get it. <laughs> Hey, Dressed by Maya, how are you? Finished making supper just in time. Hey, Sassy. Okay, I'm trying to um, make sure 413 is not the same without Troy. Hey, Lori, how are you? Okay. Hey, Gail. See the smiles. I use the Cricut. Okay, I use the Cricut Easy Press for just pressing, intersurfing for garment making. I have a whole bag of mistakes as I was learning how to use HTV. And you know, uh, one of the funniest mistakes is um and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have done it is when you forget to mirror your design um when you're using heat vinyl transfer that is one thing is it's it, because when you're using regular vinyl not not the one you put on shirts when um because i did the um the vinyl on my car a lot of people like they think i went to a body shop and i'm like nope i went and i bought the um temporary uh it was, it's not the six, uh, not the 651. I think it's the 631. Um, the one that's temporary, not the permanent. And what I did was I used the Cricut to cut out uh, Boricua on it. And then um, I applied it to both sides of my car. And a lot of, you know, and when you do that type of, uh, you know, of cut on a vinyl, you don't have to mirror it, right? Um, so, but when you're doing it on a shirt, you have to really remember, you got to mirror it because if you don't mirror it, what happens is it's, it's upside down because it's, it's like, you know, you got to like, you know, you, you peel it off and then you have the plastic and then it's like, you turn it over and then that's how you put it on the shirt. So I always like, um, used to forget to mirror it. So it's, uh. That that was my big thing. So I, I had a lot of upside down shirts when I first started and stuff. Make sure you include washing directions on the item. You know, I never do that. And that is a uh, very good advice. Um the the crafty Puerto Rican, she put that there and, and I think that is uh, really a uh, good advice. And I never, never did that to any of the items that I, I sent. And I should. I really should. And stuff. Um, for anyone. Okay. Uh, let me see. For anyone with an easy press. Though using a cricket. Oh. I read that one already. Okay. Um, let's see. I would like for. To become one with fabric. Um, let's see. If you. If you don't dump it in the dry dryer, most vinyls don't matter on brand. It will last for a year. Oh. Okay, and see, I put all my stuff in the dryer. So <laughs> that's probably why I have cracks and stuff. Um, and you know what? And, and the crafty per Puerto Ricans, right? Hey Shayna, she's Tuning in from California. <laughs> You're on TDY. 
<laughs> um, I have to put the shirts in the dryer, but the preference is for me to hang dry. You know, I I don't hang dry my shirts, and I bet you if I did, they would last longer. And I have I don't hang dry them. Hey, um, M. Kasson. Let's see. Do any of the heat presses? Yes, Angela, they do. Um, the one, the heat press that I have, that I I got it from um, Pro World Inc. And uh, and um, that is one of the reasons why I wanted that one because it had an auto shut off. Okay, so um, because sometimes you do get busy and you know you forget that you have your heat press on. And the last thing you want to do is burn down your house. <laughs> so mine, mine does have an auto shut off. The other reason why I like the press that I got too is that the draw actually pulls out. So um, I, I've heard horror stories of people accidentally burning their hands when they're putting stuff into the heat press. I mean, you're talking about heat presses that are extremely hot, especially if you're doing sublimation. A lot of times. Um, when you're doing sublimation, your heat press has to be about 425 degrees. So that is extremely hot. So I am, I'm a chicken, okay, when it comes to, <laughs> to that kind of stuff. So I got the heat press that has the pull-out draw. So I actually, you know, it pulls out. I can place my item. Then I pull it back in, and then I close it. So that's the one I got, and I really like that pull-out draw because to me it was like a safety thing, and the last thing I wanted to do was to accidentally burn myself because I know that would not, that that would suck big time. <laughs> it would, you know, um, yes, looked at Puff Vinyls compared brands in my last YouTube video. Oh, awesome. So Crafty uh, Puerto Rican has a video out there where she does a comparison on the puff vinyl. So I got to watch that. I'm definitely going to watch that. Um, Because I have not tried the puff vinyl yet, but I do want to do it. Now, I have done the puff embroidery, and I did that on a hat. And I do have a video out on that. I do want to do a video on doing puff embroidery on a shirt. Um, I went to a restaurant and I saw a lady and she had a shirt on and I, you know, and when I was looking at it, I was like, that looks like puff embroidery. So I want to try that, but I also want to try it and I want to wash it. Cause I, I'm wondering how, you know, with puff embroidery, you're actually putting foam between your product and the stitches. Okay. So it's, it's like in there. So I don't know how puff embroidery is going to be, um, how it's going to hold off in a wash, in, you know, in, in the washing cycle and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I want to do a whole video on that and try it out because I do have an idea for a puff embroidery shirt. But, um, you know, I just, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to like make it and then give it to somebody and then like, it's like a one day wear shirt, you know? <laughs> Because, you know, I've heard, um, and just so you guys know, I remember uh, once on Etsy, um, I someone had wrote a bad review, and I, and I felt so bad for the person. Um, somebody bought a shirt from a shop, and it looked like a beautiful shirt. And you could tell that the person that runs that shop, you know, worked really hard on that shirt. But, you know, I I felt for, for that, that shop owner because... And I understood what the customer was saying. Um, you know, she she gave her like a two star and she said it was a one, you know, beautiful. You know, she did say it was a beautiful shirt, but she said it was a one day shirt because she said after she washed it, the shirt just crumbled up. Now, I got a feeling that maybe she put that shirt in the dryer and then that's why it crumbled up. I was also thinking maybe when the person made the shirt, they used a tear away instead of cut away because um you know I, I think you guys heard me say in past videos do not use a cut I mean you know tear away stabilizer because tear away stabilizer dissolves okay it dissolves in the washing machine takes okay? paper right 
But if you use cutaway, cutaway will survive the washing machine and, and, and I think the dryer as well. And it's going to keep the stitches in better it, intact, okay? As if with tearaway stabilizer, what's going to happen is it dissolves. So, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'm, you know, when, when you know, I read the review and, and I, and I saw that she said it just crumbled up. My guess was, oh, she may, she may have used the tear away and, you know, the lady went and put it in the washing machine and that's, you know, of course it dissolved and I crumbled up. That's that, that was what went through my mind, you know, and stuff. So, you know, um, that's another thing too, with the, you, you got to know how to do it. You really have to know how to embroider and use the right stuff so that you can really produce quality items. You know, that that's why embroidery is not easy. It's not for everybody. You know, this, um, you know, now you're seeing a lot more people getting into it, you know, me included, you know. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, the more you do it, the more you start realizing how important certain steps in embroidery is, you know, like, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you know, when I first started doing embroidery, I was like stabilizer, you know, it's like, uh, spend money on stabilizer. I could just sew on it, you know, <laughs> well, I learned the hard way. <laughs> you need stabilizer. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you, there, it, it's not, to me, embroidery is not the craft where you get to skip steps. Or, or get to skip certain things, you know, in, if you really wanted to come out right, okay? So, you know, trust me. <laughs> that was funny, too, when I, when I did use the uh, stabilizer and stuff, because I thought I could get away with it, because I was like, you don't need that. You just sew on it, you know? I'm like, nope. Found out the hard way. You, you need it, you know? Um, and, okay, um, let's see. Sublimation printer is on my list. You, you're gonna love. I mean, I, I'm telling you, a sublimation printer. It is, it is really neat. It, it truly is neat. It, it's a whole. It's different. I mean, what I really love is, I, I got to be on me for the sublimation. It's been mostly the um, the mugs, the coffee mugs, and you know, I, I do little wine um, stuff. Um, this I'm not gonna do much of, you know, the um, tumblers because you know it requires putting it in an oven. I haven't found any other heat press for it. I'm sure that now they're gonna come out with heat presses for these uh, tumblers and everything. And I, I just don't want to spend any more money on any more heat presses. I really don't. So I'm just like I'll just stick to my coffee mugs. Um, I'll do shirts once in a while and stuff. And that's about it when it comes to the sublimation. I, I don't know how how big it'll be, you know, um, you know how far I'm going to take it. But like I said, I did take a break from it because of the cost. You know, I just, the waste, I, I was just like, oh, my God. Uh, Crafty Puerto Rican got the Echo Tank. See, I just went and got the sawgrass, and I and you know what, sawgrass ink very expensive, very expensive. It is. It's very very expensive. Um. Yeah, I see. Cosmo ink. Yep, and you know, I I've heard of Cosmo ink. A lot of people have been using that, and and I've heard really good things about that. But that I do not believe I can use on my printer. I cannot use that. Um, does the ink on the printer dry you out? No. Okay. Susie, uh, Susan of uh, 523. Does the ink in the printer dry out if the printer is not used at least once a week? Okay. One of the things that um, that also with my sublimation printer, with the sawgrass, you never turn it off. You have to leave it on an on status, okay? Because what happens is the printer, once in a while, you'll hear it, and it's kind of like uh, moving its heads, I think, you know? Um, I don't know what it's really doing, but it's you, I hear the printer. Now, um, I used for I used it for a whole year, and then I started noticing that the printouts weren't coming out as great. 
But then when I found out, it was just that I had to clean my heads. And that was a very easy process to do on the sawgrass. So um, this, with uh, sublimation printers, I don't know how the others are, like um, the one that um, the Crafty Puerto Rican has. But I know that with the sawgrass, I don't turn it off. That is always plugged in. It's on. Um, Yeah, Laura says a lot of people don't realize the starter inks, like the demo inks that you get, a lot they aren't the full size. They're not, and, and you know I'm I'm gonna be honest. The ink is expensive with the sawgrass. However, though this ink has lasted me a very very long time. Okay, I had it for a whole year, and then I had to buy ink. And I have a um a young man that I help with his uh, t-shirt business. And he comes sometimes and he uses my sawgrass and he's an artist and he uses a lot of ink. And I'm talking about, he has very deep color um, illustrations, okay? Cause he hand draws his cartoons and stuff like that. And he uses a lot of ink. And let me tell you, he was coming in here and using my ink, but it lasts. It really, really lasted. So, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, it took a whole year, and all those graphics that were printed out. Um, is it expensive? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, me. My whole thing is every time I have to open up my wallet and I have to spend more than like sixty, seventy dollars, I'd be like, hmm. I don't like that, you know, <laughs> so I mean, I'm just cheap, okay, you know, I just don't like, you know, um, let's see, any white toner, okay, I do many transfers for customers, oh, you know, that's a good idea. Um, Barb, I didn't think about that. That is a really good idea. You can actually, if anything, you can make transfers and print them all out and ship them out to customers. And so, Barb, that's, yeah, I've heard of that. There is a learning curve, but you need the correct printer settings and digitals for each of the paper process. That's a pretty good idea. Embroidery looks the best in my opinion, long lasting and elegant. Yeah, in my opinion too, yep, but you, you gotta, you know, it, it's um, it's a process, you know, it's very, very time consuming. That's, that's the thing with the embroidery. Embroidery takes a lot more time to do than if you were to do any of the other two. And, and I have to admit, I, I kind of like embroidery. I could sit there and watch that deal go up and down. I don't know. For some reason, I find it very um, soothing to me. I don't know. I, I just like it and stuff. Um, there is a lot of take in consideration. <laughs> Miss Max, my embroidery machine is my Tesla. <laughs> I can tell you, boy. I mean, I love I, my car. I have owned that car for. We have been driving Tesla since 2016 when they first, you know, like came out, and. Um, I, I we were we used to be the brunt of jokes like oh you're gonna get stuck and all that stuff and everything, but um, let me tell I I don't think I'll ever go back to a gas car never never. Um, sometimes it's a hassle switching between the Mac and Windows on the Mac. Yeah, Nikki, it yeah, and that's the thing. I don't want this is the thing too. It's like I I like things simple. Okay. It's like you have enough to worry about, you know, creating the embroidery designs and, and packaging it up and doing my orders and all that kind of stuff. The last thing I need is something to complicate my process. 
So that's why I'm like, no, leave my Mac alone in brilliant quirks. I got it. You know, I'm like, no, you know, so I'll be like, oh, great information. Oh, Iris, you're welcome. Hey, Walk by Faith. Great tips. A little too much for me. <laughs> Jeanette, thank you so much for the live. Great information. You're awesome. Ah, uh, thank you. I use glitter, the hot pink. It will not stay down. Are you using a heat press, Miss uh, Miss Miles, or are you using the uh, Cricut thing? And this is another thing too. Also, think about it when you're using um, five thirty. 530, yep, five thirty one. Five thirty one is the the non permanent. Um, when w the the other thing too with the heat vinyl transfer. Okay, you when you're when you're heating it up and you're putting it on the shirt, you can't. You can't really hold it on too too long. I guess what am I gonna say? Okay, um, the adhesive can wear out. Okay, you can't. Um, sometimes the adhesive, it's like it, you can unadhesive it. I don't know if I just created a word. I think I just did. But anyway, what I'm saying is that it can wear out, and then before you know it, the the stuff doesn't stick to the shirt anymore. And oh, and here's another trick too that I learned. You know, when you're making, when you're doing heat vinyl transfer and you accidentally, um, you know, put the, the vinyl on a shirt, okay, and you're like, oh, you know, it, it, I want to get it off the shirt. You don't, you don't take the shirt and throw it in the garbage. Nail polish remover. Nail polish remover will remove the um, heat transfer vinyl from the shirt. So usually what I'll do is like, sometimes I'll have like, you know, I'll accidentally have a little piece, you know, when you're weeding the heat vinyl transfer and a little piece of that vinyl got stuck to the, the, the plastic. And then I heat it, you know, I press it down. And then when I, I peel it off, I'm like, oh, I see that dot. Just take a Q-tip with the nail polish remover. Just tab over it and it'll come right off. Just something, uh, just a little tip. You know, um, let me see. Murray was first issue for me. Yeah, Mur marrying that uh, is <laughs> funny. I have an instruction care card. And you know what? I need to do that because I don't have an in instruction care card um, for anything. My kitchen towels, my, uh, my nothing, you know, I just send it out and stuff. But then again, I haven't gotten any complaints or anything and stuff. Um, you know, I have not tried rhinestones. Have not tried that. Hey, Leisha, how are you? If you wear it, don't tear it. That's right. And I, I unfortunately, I think that's what she did because the way the lady described it, she was like, oh, I put it in the washing machine. And, and you know, I mean, after, you know, she, she said it was a one day shirt, something like that. So my whole thing was it probably wasn't the right stabilizer and stuff so i'm like uh uh let's see let's see let's see i will post it on oh okay thanks barb i just finished console cover for my husband's car and i want your opinion hey wilma i want to purchase a tumbler press you know, I think they have them now. I think they have them. Now. But see, this is the thing. This is what I'm afraid of, okay? It's like I already have like seven machines. And I'm going to end up like turning my home into like a factory, you know? And I'm going to start getting looks from my husband and Carlito and the dog. They're all going to look at me like, well, what's going on, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to take a break. From getting new machines. The last new machine I got was the Jujuki uh, TL 20, uh, 2010Q. And um, I have to, I, I like that machine, <laughs> you know, but, and you know, um, talk about machine. I was playing around sewing and I made these little things. I was making these. Um, but you know what was so funny was I started on the Jujuki and the, and, and it came out really cute, little boxy, you know, little 
square boxes. You know, I was like, oh, these are cute. Um, and uh, I started on the Jujuki, but then I ended up uh, finishing on my SC1900, sewing on that. So I, you know, and I kind of like said, okay, Jeanette, you brought that big machine and you now you're back on the other machine. So, <laughs> but I like that machine because what happens is when I have to change feet from my zipper foot to my standard sewing foot, it's just so much easier to do it on the SC1900 than it is on the Jujuki because with the Jujuki, I have to like unscrew it. With the SC1900, all you got to do is press the knob and the, the you know, the, the, the foot just comes out. You know, your sewing foot just comes out. It just releases so fast. So I, I just felt that it was easier to sew on the uh, SC1900 than on the Jujuki for that, for, you know, for those projects. So, you know. Um, let me see, I think we are. Hey, Nikki, how are you? And hey, Miss Z, how are you? Um, hey, Gail, I think I'm all caught up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do those care instructions, guys. I, you know, and the jean jacket. Oh, somebody, Barb, wanted to post a picture of the jean jacket that I embroidered, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. Hey, Iris. And stuff. You know, I love embroidering um, jean jackets. I mean, to me, they're, like, really easy to embroider, but I think it's because of the tough material. You know, I prefer to embroider um, book bags. Jean jackets. I love my kitchen towels. I love my dinner napkins. And I think it's because I know exactly what to use with those things. So I've done it so many times that it's like, that's like a piece of cake. Um, the shirts, I'm not a fan of embroidering on the shirts because it's like a hit and miss thing, you know? Um, and, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I started playing around with the shirts. And, you know, now I got all these uh, samples shirts <laughs> these are all kinds that i have embroidered and now i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a notebook and i'm probably you know put them in a notebook so that if i ever have like a client and they want a particular shirt or they want to see the type of quality of work that i do i thought maybe that would be cool because it could be like my little portfolio right and i could say okay well this is the type of work that i do and you know or samples of shirts that i can make and stuff like that and, and stuff so i don't know we'll see but anyway guys it is past the happy hour time it's getting close to 9 30 and stuff I am so sorry. I'm always, um, I've been going over and stuff. I got to get me a mon uh, moderator or something. I don't know how you say that word. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, my English is all jacked up sometimes. <laughs> anyway, but I am so glad that you guys um, were able to come and spend some uh, Friday evening with me. And I really hope you enjoyed the topic. I just really wanted to share with you guys my experience on heat vinyl transfer sublimation and embroidery. Um, you know, I hope you guys are getting ready for Christmas, you know, cause Christmas is coming up. Um, uh, one, uh, I plan on doing a video soon to talk about supplies, um, blanks and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, I've been looking at some resources to help you guys, you know, get blanks at, you know, a more economical cost and everything. Cause you know me, I'm always looking to, you know, where I can save that dollar and stuff. So I've been looking at some sites and I found some really great places and I want to share that with you. So I'm hoping that maybe that could do that for next week's video. But, um, you know, I just want to share that up front. I also have started a video series on the uh, family blanket. I am still working on the designs. I am hoping to have the blanket done by this weekend. And I will film me embroidering the blanket. Um, you know, and, you know, so that you guys can see how I did it. I did do a part one. The part one is how I figured out the layout. And the part two is, you know, so that you guys can get an idea of the different types of designs that I'm looking at. Really, I, what I really wanted to do with the part two was really to show you guys the amount of time and effort that it takes to make these blankets. The simple fact that I wanted to do that is because sometimes I feel like we shortchange ourselves when we are selling our products, okay? 
You know, a lot of times people don't understand the amount of time that it takes to embroider, the effort, the materials and stuff like that. And, you know, you want to make that sale, but what ends up happening is sometimes you kind of shortchange yourself. So one of the things that I did say in that video is I wanted you guys to take a look. It's nine different embroidery files that I have to create. And now if you really think about it, it's nine different times that I got to hoop the same blanket. So it's going to be a long process to create that blanket for my mom. So, you know, if you plan on doing something like this to sell, make sure you're getting paid for that. Make sure that you're getting paid for your time, for all that hooping and all that designing and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work. So, you know, don't sell yourself short and stuff. And, you know, when people, you know, kind of get snippy with you and be like, oh, that's too much money. Well, fine. And go find somebody, you know, go, you know, just tell them, go find another son. You know, <laughs> I ain't do it. I'm just saying, you know, don't sell yourself short. Your your time is valuable, okay? Don't let anybody tell you that that you're not worth top dollar, especially when you know you put good work out there. So anyway, just something I want to share with you guys. So anyway, guys, I am going to call it the night. It is 930. And so please enjoy your weekend. Please be safe out there. Thank you so much for all your support and for um, joining me tonight. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you haven't um, done so, I have a Facebook group called um, Embroidery Happy Hours Adventures. Okay, please join and, you know, post your stuff out there. I would love to see your projects. If you have information you want to share, do that. If you, you know, if you have questions about what can you post, what you can't you post, just ask me a question. I'm, all I'm fine with that. We have some folks that are starting their own YouTube channels. We got the Crafty Puerto Rican. She just started her channel. Um, I know Angela C is going to be um, starting her own YouTube channel too. Um, she's working on her first video. I'm, I'm hoping she gets to post that soon. So, you know, please, you know, so let's, I, I really want us to all support each, each other. Also, I have been collaborating with, um, with Lori and also with uh, the Baby booby, Booty mom entrepreneur we have a facebook group and i want to i want to tell you what the facebook group is oh man Lori, if you can post it i'm looking real quick i'm trying to look real quick i know i think oh i forgot the name of it i know it is hold on i'll tell you in a minute sewing sewing and embroidery enthusiasts Okay, so the sewing and embroidery enthusiasts, um, if you guys have not been, is not, are not part of that Facebook group, sign up also, okay? Um, you know, Lori puts uh, videos out there. I put videos out there. Um, Shayna puts videos out there. E from the Baby Booty puts videos out there. I think Ashley from the Mom, uh, um, Mom Entrepreneur. She puts videos out there, and I think there's another lady, I think Carly, something like that. She puts videos out there, too. So, you know, it's all about sharing information. That's, you know, that's what this is all about. I mean, you know, so, guys, you know, another great place for you to go there um, and look. And this is another thing, too. When you go to these Facebook groups and, and you have um, a question or something like that, do a search on these Facebook groups. And I bet you you're going to find that somebody posted probably the same question that you have and you can read all the different comments and stuff, things people tried and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, use these resources. They're all there for you guys to, you know, to help you succeed, you know, so please use them. Okay. So if you have any questions also, please reach out. I mean, you know, I do check my emails. I try to respond as, as, as much as I can. Um, you even do a shout out on the, on the Facebook group, go, Hey, Jeanette, I need to talk to you, whatever. Okay. And um, I'll try to reach out to you guys and help you out in any way I can, okay? So you guys take care. Have a great day. Be safe. And I will see you guys next week, next Friday at 8 o'clock. So happy uh, sewing and happy embroidering. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.